Hello, everyone. It is really a great pleasure to have this opportunity to share with all of you my research in the space of the social and economic consequences of the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning. And specific paper I will talk about today is algorithmic transparency with strategic users. And this is a joint work with Chao Chu, who is a PhD student at Tupper, uh, Stephanus, who is a faculty member at Michigan Ross, and Pauran, who is my colleague at Tepper. So nowadays, uh, machine learning algorithms have been widely used to make a lot of important decisions that have far reaching impacts on people's lives, such as who gets a job, who gets a loan, how much time the person spends in prison, and also the medical treatments patients we see. There's no doubt that machine learning algorithms can bring significant efficiency gains. And there is also plenty of evidence that machine learning algorithm can increase decision quality and also uh, increase welfare. However, uh, scholars and practitioners have also identified many problems that algorithmic decision making may introduce and exacerbate, including the increasing opacity of algorithmic, uh, the increasing opacity of decision making and also uh, uh, potential algorithmic bias and the lack of accountability and so on. And oftentimes these problems are actually interrelated. Uh, for example, if we have an opaque algorithm, there may be risks of secret profiling and illegal discrimination. Without the knowledge of the algorithm, it's very hard for the public to check whether firms are in compliance with regulations and ethical practices when they are using machine learning algorithms to make decisions. Therefore, there are increasing calls for algorithmic transparency. For example, Mark Rutenberg, who is an American law expert, says that at the intersection of law and technology, knowledge of the algorithm is the fundamental human right. And also GDPR dictates that whenever personal data is subject to automated decision-making, people have the right to explanation. Despite the increasing calls for algorithmic uh, transparency, uh, most firms are very reluctant to make their algorithm transparent. And one of the main reasons they cite is that algorithmic transparency can open the door to user gaming. For example, if users know um, the details of a classification algorithm or they know how their attributes will affect the classification results, they will have strong incentive to manipulate their attributes to receive a more favorable classification. And this will actually hurt the predicted power of the algorithm. To see why, I will uh, show you a very simple example of a classification algorithm. But I want to emphasize that this is uh, just an illustrative example. This is not a model we use in our theoretical analysis. So suppose that a firm wants to hire some new employees and it uh, receives a large number of applications and uses an algorithm to identify which applicants are likely to be high performers. Okay. So basically what the algorithm does is to take a, a set of input features X and then predict uh, the type of the applicant, high or low. So among the features used to make the prediction, uh, some of them are causal and others are correlational. Causal features are features that can causally affect uh, individuals' performance. For example, getting additional education uh, in a relevant area can be a causal feature because this improves uh, individuals' ability and their performance. Correlational features, on the other hand, are features that are only correlated with uh, individuals' performance and changing the values of these correlational features will not change uh, individuals' performance. For example, wearing glasses can be a, a correlational feature if for some reason, historical data tells us that uh, wearing glasses is somehow predictive uh, of individuals' performance. Okay, so the distinction between the causal feature and the cor correlational feature actually has very important implications for algorithmic transparency. Suppose that we publish this algorithm now, the applicants know that wearing glasses can increase their chance of getting hired. So everyone will include a photo of them wearing glasses in the application. And as a result, there will be no variation in this variable uh, across different applicants. And the predicted power of this variable or feature will go away. And eventually, this feature will drop out of the algorithm. 
Now, at the first glance, this will actually hurt the company because the performance of the algorithm uh, will be negatively affected. But in this paper, we actually show that that's not always the case. Uh, in, uh, under a wide range of conditions, we show that uh, the firm can be better off making their algorithm transparent. So the most important research question we answer in this paper is how does algorithmic transparency affect the firm's welfare and individual's welfare? And we answer this question in the context of, uh, in a hiring contest. Uh, so we construct a game theory model uh, for a hiring scenario. And the players in this game include a profit maximizing firm that offers a fixed wage to all individuals they hire and also a set of rational job applicants we call agents. And there are two types of agents, high talent or H type and low talent or L type. And we assume that a, a theta fraction of the agents in the population are of H type and the remaining Y minus theta fraction of the population are of L type. So talent level or type is directly related to job performance. And if the firm can perfectly observe uh, agents' types, uh, they will only hire H-type agents. Again, the firm observes uh, features of these ap uh, applicants or agents. Um, but we will classify these features into causal features and correlational features. And uh, for simplicity, we consider only one causal feature and one correlational feature. Uh, so you can think of the causal feature as getting additional education and the correlational feature as uh, wearing glasses. And also both the causal and correlational features uh, take a discrete value of zero or one. Now, apart from their impact on uh, the agent's performance, causal and correlational features also differ in the following aspects. First, cost to improve. We assume that there is a non-trivial cost to improve the causal feature and the H-type agents have cost advantage. Uh, in other words, CH is less than CL. And the cost to improve the correlational feature is assumed to be close to zero. So such a low cost will make our algorithm highly susceptible to user gaming. Now in terms of agents knowledge, Agents know which causal feature is used, no matter whether the algorithm is transparent or opaque. For example, everyone knows that education will be considered uh, by the recruiters. Uh, for the correlational feature, uh, agents know that there exists a correlational feature in the algorithm, but they don't know what it is. And therefore, they cannot manipulate that particular feature unless the algorithm is made transparent. And in terms of initial distribution, uh, for a causal feature, we assume that everyone starts from zero and strategically decide whether they want to improve their causal feature uh, to one. For the correlational feature, um, there is a natural distribution. Among all H-type agents, a lambda fraction has a correlational feature of one and one minus lambda uh, fraction have a uh, correlational feature of one. And we further assume that lambda is between 0.5 to one. Uh, so this implies a positive relationship between the correlational feature and the type being H. So in the opaque scenario, um, uh, each individual or each agent can be uh, characterized by their values, uh, by her values uh, on the causal feature and the correlational feature. So there are four possible combinations and we call these combinations states. So here you can see the initial distribution of these agents in the future space. Uh, so again, everyone starts uh, from a zero, correlate, uh, zero causal feature. And among the H-type agents, uh, a lambda portion are in CA and one minus lambda portion are in CC. Okay. Just want to quickly mention that when the algorithm is transparent, everyone will have a correlational feature of one and there are only two possible states. Uh, e and F. Now the game proceeds as follows. The firm needs to first choose between the opaque algorithm and the transparent algorithm. If the firm chooses the opaque algorithm, then the agent moves first and uh, choose their strategies on the causal feature. Then the firm will choose an optimal hiring strategy, which can be represented by four hiring probabilities for the four possible states, A, B, C, and D. 
If the firm chooses the transparent algorithm, then the firm moves first and announces the correlational feature it uses in the algorithm and also its uh, hiring strategy, which will now be represented by two hiring probabilities for states E and F. Then agents choose their strategies on the causal feature. And finally, the firm will follow the published uh, algorithm to hire agents. We assume that an agent's performance is a function of uh, the agent's type and the value of the causal feature. So the firm's expected payoff is, is essentially the expected value of the total performance of all the agents it hires and the salary, the total salary the firm pays to these agents. And the agent's expected utility is simply the salary times probability, get of, uh, probability of getting hired minus the cost to improve the causal feature if she decides to do so. So next I will show the uh, equilibrium in the two-dimensional space defined by CH and CL relative to the salary R. Because we assume CH is less than CL, this area, uh, this area is invalid. So we'll focus on uh, the area below the 45 degree line. So this figure summarizes uh, uh, agents uh, uh, strategy, equilibrium strategy uh, under the opaque algorithm. Uh, so you can see that there are five types of equilibria. So in case one, both CH and CL are high. And in this case, uh, neither H nor L type agents improve education. So here I'm using education and causal feature, causal feature interchangeably. In contrast, uh, in case three, the cost to improve education is low for both H-type and L-type agents. So uh, in this case, both H and L-type agents improve education. Okay. But in both cases, uh, we observe a pooling equilibrium on the causal feature. In case two, where CH is low and CL is high, uh, we see that only H-type agents improve education. Uh, so here we observe a uh, separating equilibrium on the causal feature. In cases four and five, uh, there is a partial separation between H-type and L-type uh, agents on the causal dimension. Similarly, we can solve for the uh, equilibrium under the transparent algorithm. Uh, this is what it looks like. There are three possible uh, equilibria here. Again, in case one, neither H-type nor L-type agents improve education. In case three, both H-type and L-type agents uh, improve education. And in case two, only H-type agents improve education. Now, we can compare the uh, uh, equilibrium strategies of agents uh, under the opaque algorithm and under the transparent algorithm. And depending on whether the equilibrium changes or not, uh, we can actually divide this area under the 45 degree line into seven smaller regions. In regions N1, N2, and N3, uh, agents' decisions on the causal feature do not change after the firm switches from the uh, opaque algorithm to the transparent algorithm. But in C1, C2, C3, and C4, uh, agents' decisions on the causal feature change after the algorithm is made transparent. For example, in C4, the equilibrium changes from neither type improving education to only H type improving education. And if we, look, uh, if we take a closer look at uh, the direction of the change, uh, we'll realize that after the algorithm is made transparent, agents, uh, especially H type agents, tend to invest more into education. This is because uh, when the algorithm is published, uh, L-type agents start to gain on the correlational feature. So the H-type agents, the advantage that H-type agents used to have on the correlational feature goes away. So that actually increased the incentive for the H-type agent to invest in the causal feature to separate themselves from the L-type agents. Now to answer the question whether the firm will be better off making the algorithm transparent, uh, we need to compare firm's payoff under the opaque algorithm and under the transparent algorithm. So this is the firm's payoff under the opaque algorithm and this is the firm's payoff under the transparent algorithm. Okay. And then we can perform the comparison uh, in each of the seven regions that I previously defined. Uh, 
In regions M1, M2, and M3, the firm will weakly prefer the opaque algorithm. Recall that in these regions, uh, the uh, agent's decisions on the causal feature uh, do not change after the uh, algorithm is made transparent. So the firm will only be worse off uh, publishing the algorithm because, uh, because of the loss of the predictive power of the correlational feature. And uh, in region C4, uh, so recall that uh, in this region, the uh, equilibrium on the causal feature changes from neither type uh, improving education to uh, only H type improving education. So under the transparent algorithm, uh, the firm can actually perfectly separate between the H type and L type agents based on just the causal feature. So it doesn't even need to use the correlational feature. And on top of that, uh, in this particular region under the transparent algorithm, uh, high type individuals or H type individuals uh, invest more into education and the performance will increase. That also benefits the firm. So that's why the firm will always prefer a transparent algorithm in this region. Now in regions C1, C2, and C3, the situation is more complicated. Um, the firm sometimes prefers the transparent algorithm, other times prefers the uh, opaque algorithm, and it depends on the size of beta. We now turn to agents' welfare. And so uh, here in this figure, the orange area is where agents prefer the opaque algorithm and the blue area is where the agents prefer the transparent algorithm. And the agents are indifferent between the opaque and transparent algorithms in the gray area. So you can see that um, the agents tend to prefer the uh, opaque algorithm when CH and CL are relatively large. Uh, this is because uh, publishing the algorithm kind of forced the agents to invest more into education or the causal feature. Of course, this will increase their chance of getting higher, but the cost of increasing education increases with CH and CL, but the benefit does not. We also yeah. observe that in yeah. some regions, yes. Three minutes left. Sure, uh, um, this is the second last slide, thank you. Yeah, so we also see that uh, in some regions, um, there is a conflict of interest between the agent and the firm uh, when it comes to what type of algorithm they prefer. But in other regions, uh, the firm and the agents may prefer the same type of algorithm. Uh, just to sum up, the most important takeaway from this paper is that the firm can be uh, economically better off making their algorithm transparent, even in the presence of strategic users who will game the system. The key intuition behind this finding is that uh, publishing the algorithm actually intensifies uh, agents' competition on the causal feature, which can either help the firm better separate the H-type agents from the L-type agent based on the causal feature, and it can also increase the performance of all the agents that the firm hires. And we also show that agents may not always be better off under the uh, transparent algorithm. And we show that in some situations, the firm, uh, sorry, the agents actually prefer the opaque algorithm. And this paper also shows the importance to account for agents' strategic reactions when evaluating the impact of imposing some fairness or transparency requirements on algorithms. Uh, in many studies of algorithmic bias and transparency, um, agents' behavior is assumed to be static. But in reality, people will react to these uh, you know, changes to the algorithms. Uh, assuming away this kind of strategic reaction may lead us to incorrect or misleading conclusions. That's all I have. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, Yan, I think you have one minute if you'd like to take a question, or we can also move to the end. I guess I'll just take the last question uh, in the interest of time. Um, uh, there was the question about our assumptions. Um, can you clarify on um, grounds for your assumption about a correlational factor are not known to the agents? Uh, that's a very good question. So here uh, we're assuming that there are a large number of possible correlational features. So the uh, agents will not be able to figure out which exact correlation, uh, correlational features uh, is used uh, in the algorithm. 
So even though the cost to uh, manipulate the correlational feature is very low, there are so many of them, and that's why they will not do so uh, unless the firm publishes the algorithm. Thank you, Yan.